As you'll see. See, there's the flurry. And it splits. And I took damage. And so that's why this boss is a crapshoot if I'll actually stand a chance. What's up, guys? It's your boy, Gazda, back at it again. Here we go. We're going to jump right into it. Uh, and then I'll explain a little bit later. But if you're new to this channel, this is where we play Archero. Uh, at least for now. So this series is all Archero related. So if that's content that seems really up your alley, then I highly recommend you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss an upload. I upload about two to three times per week. Uh, a little slow on the upload this week, but I wanna make sure I get something out to you guys. I have been not uploading any videos of me playing the newest level, Frozen Pinnacle, but don't think I haven't been playing. I definitely have been playing. And uh, this level is hard. This is a bullet hell level. So let's just talk about the do's and don'ts that I've learned about this level. The do's are make sure that you are getting as many skills that increase your base stats as possible. Um, this is one level where I don't think that the defensive skills are really going to help you because there's so many enemies on screen at certain points and there's so many projectiles that you're not going to do very well with like shield guard and uh, the dodge. At least my play style. It doesn't really benefit me. Um, so before we dive into more information, I picked up Blaze because that's the thing that I think is the best suited for this level is you want to be able to maximize your output and attack if you want to stand a chance because in the levels 30 and 40 range boy oh boy there's so many projectiles and if you can't kill those enemies quickly you're going to get overwhelmed and you're going to die so i picked blaze to increase my attack power and that's why i'm also going to go with rage because well scalable attack power depending on your low health which at the later levels you will be at low health definitely helps so let's really talk really talk hmm i see I can't speak any more English. Let's talk about the two enemies we encountered. So we have the old cold serpents from the hero level, Desert Storm, Hero Desert Storm. So their attack pattern is just, you know, springing up, eyeless snakes, shooting three projectiles, burrowing. Nothing that hard. They get difficult when there's a room full of a ton of enemies and then they're just over there waddling. So I wouldn't say they're maximum priority. Uh, there's going to be an enemy that I introduced to you that is definitely going to be maximum priority. Then you have what are is essentially taking the place of the carnivorous plant. Uh, it stays in one spot. It's these hands, these dead hands. They don't move, uh, but they do shoot three projectiles depending on their hands position, which does shift and change a little bit, but not too much. Taking a lot of damage here, but it's okay. Um, I, that's this is perfect that I just see Toxic Meteor. Do not get any of the Meteor moves. Any of them. They're terrible, okay? They're worse than the Strike abilities. And the Strikes actually aren't that bad considering. Now that I've actually played with the Toxic Meteor and the Lightning Meteor and the Blaze Meteor. What do they do? Sounds really cool. The animation's really cool. I'm going Freeze because it's good to, you know, pause out the enemies. But what it does is you don't control it. It shoots a meteor on the screen, which does splash damage, a la like a living bomb. Here's the thing. It does not come regularly. You never know when it's going to come. And in my experience, nine times out of ten, it always misses the enemies. And then when it does hit, you would think maybe it would do like massive damage, like five, six thousand. No, it does what like strike does uh, for any of the strike abilities, like 1400, 1500. So it's not worth it. So sometimes it can proc multiple times and land in a small area. And sometimes it can't. But here's the worst part about it. Because it's so large, it actually causes screen clutter. It's terrible. And in the level where you need to be able to see this screen because there's so many projectiles, it's one of the worst moves you could ever grab. And the only reason I noticed is because one time, obviously, I picked it up. I was like, oh boy, I bet this is cool. It's going to do a lot of damage or something. And then it was terrible and it ruined my whole run because it just was blocking the screen up with the meteor because it falls so slowly. Um, and then the splash damage. And then, of course, I've won it on the wheel. So that definitely caused um, me to die. So I don't like getting it. And it's almost a scrapped run anytime you end up with one of the meteors. There's Blazing Meteor. We're not getting that. We're going to attack speed boost. So then uh, another new enemy we've just encountered there, which is like a la the Desert Storm Mummy uh, skeleton. But this one just shoots out a bounceable frost ball. That's it. 
Um, nothing crazy to deal with. These guys are not hard. The only reason I'm taking so much damage is I'm not focusing so much as I'm trying to make sure I explain the basics of this level. Now we have the first boss. The first boss and the second boss, they change intermediately. Sometimes this is the first boss, sometimes this is the second boss. It's a giant, uh, no surprise, eyeless serpent. This seems to be a, a common enemy that likes to be bosses, but it's the frost version. So what does it do? Th literally, that's it. You can see its movement patterns. It burrows, springs, and shoots a huge wave of projectile, which if you're far enough, you have enough time to avoid it. What makes it more tricky is it spawns very regularly um, mobs, little ads over here, um, that will then, you know, mess you up. But as long as you're, you're keeping your distance, you should be able to be fine on this boss. It shouldn't give you any trouble. Okay, we're going to trade the HP because, like I said earlier, damage output, output is really important. So I traded with the devil. Front arrow is really important. Now we have another new enemy, which is the ice golem. Um, or Ice Robot. I really don't think these are robots. They look like golems to me. Uh, I'm actually going to go with Invincibility Star. I went back and forth playing this run, but I think Invincibility Star can help, um, even though just don't rely on it. Always make sure you're dodging, and if it happens that it procs, great, but don't like try and run into projectiles hoping it procs. Don't do that. Yeah. So the Ice Golem, what's different about them is now they do they generally stay in one place and their projectiles move slowly apart so basically if they're standing in the same spot you don't have to move because the projectiles will move apart and you won't get hit but they're the first enemy in the game so far that actually causes a status ailment to you they will freeze you when you get hit which slows down your attack uh attack speed um and your movement briefly just about as long as freeze does to these guys now these are very dangerous enemies they are the new ghouls, they're the blue ghouls, and uh, they shoot extremely fast with large hitbox um, thorns, icicles, I really don't know, uh, something like that. So they should be your priority. I told you there's going to be some priority enemies, they are, because their enemies, their does, wow, I really can't talk. <sighs> Let's try that again. Those enemies attack fast, and when your screen is cluttered, you won't be able to see their attack coming, and I've died many times on this level because of these guys. So, make them your priority when you see them on the screen. There is going to be another enemy type that you're going to see pretty soon that will show you why this level is difficult to then make some of these difficult enemies your priority. But we'll get to that when we get to that. We're at stage 15, taking HP boost. I did trade with the devil, so it's good to get that health back. Um, my best strategy for them is, well, you don't want to stay in one place too long that's really it like make sure you're shooting and moving they seem to be very preoccupied more so than the other ghouls of say like lost castle they kind of more or less don't want to attack you but then sometimes they'll just go on a string where they will attack you so always try and aim for them first because it's better that they're kind of distracted hovering around doing their ghostly duties um but yeah they're they're dangerous they're one of the most dangerous enemies in this new level, I would say, because the projectile is fast and it, you know, hits for 13, 1400 damage. Um, so again, this would be a very hard level for you to take on if you don't have at least 5,000 health, I'd say, because that 5,000 health guarantees me about um, five hits on average, five to six hits. Another new enemy there, we got a new ring creature. Um, it's it's only difficult when there's multiple of them in the room or when you're dealing with all the other projectiles. It just creates a slow pulse spiral of small little projectiles which can kind of sometimes blend in the background so you want to be careful on them um try and like aim yourself in a position where you are again hey boomerang shoot out shoot out shout out to the boomerang oh my god i'm so disappointed in myself i'm sorry fam um i can't talk maybe it's because i burned my tongue last night i don't know uh Try and aim yourself in a position where you can hit multiple enemies, including the ring creature. So you're focusing on an enemy on the back, but then the ring creature is, is taking taking blasts. So here's the second boss, or it could be the first boss. It is a, another, it's a, a living boss, living bomb boss. I give up. You know what? I just give up. I can't talk anymore. Um, living bomb boss, these are its two moves. Is It throws about five to six uh, volleys. Usually I can one-shot this boss without taking damage and usually can make another deal with the devil. 
um, and then it will lay bombs on the ground, which will then cause uh, a cross of damage. So my strategy is stick to the walls, and uh, you know just kind of avoid him or her or it as long as possible, and then when you get done with that volley, you move far away so that you don't get in the way of those attacks. Not a very hard boss, in my opinion. Well, that's good. I mean, because the heal wouldn't have done that much good to us. Okay, I'm going to go with uh, diagonal arrows because there's going to be a lot of mobs later on. Okay, these are the other new enemies. Now, what's really interesting about these guys is they're not aggressive. They split, and when they split, they don't give you like a bloodthirst proc or if you have a death nova or a death bomb or anything like that. They have to die in the smaller form before that would actually happen. But they take up a lot of screen space and move a lot across the screen in that they will usually take your targeting reticle. Whatever reason, your archer hero wants to kill them first almost always. So you have to move constantly not only to avoid the projectiles, but to get in the close range so that you can actually take out the more important enemies like these new living bombs. Now... They don't seem difficult, but when there's multiple of them on the screen, they get difficult. Their move is they launch a slow-firing bomb, which then splits into four ice projectiles, which do not freeze you, but they do do significant damage. Um, and so the best way to avoid them uh, is keep a lot of distance away from the bomb. Don't be near it when it explodes. Don't don't be in like a position like that um, because you're you're going to get rocked. That's, that's my best advice for this one. This is the first public playthrough I'm putting up on my channel. I have played this uh, level consistently, so that's why I feel experienced enough to tell you guys. I, this is not going to be a walkthrough video. I don't see that happening. I have not even encountered the final boss yet, so I don't see this as being a successful run. But I wanted to make sure I'm showing content of what Frozen Pinnacle looks like. So in this case, I will go for Frost Meteor. Just kidding. Psych. Fuck that move. We're actually going to go for a slow projectile. Um, I, I kind of don't like it because it leaves the projectiles on the screen too long. Um, but it does help. And if I have to choose out of this garbage, I'm obviously going to go with slow projectile. Because maybe it will help with some of the projectiles down the line. But Death Bomb is just really not that helpful. Um, because it doesn't work on these guys until they split into the smaller part. So you see like how I position myself and that I'm aiming for those other guys, but I'm trying to make sure I get in the way of the ring monster, so I'm also hitting the ring monster while I aim for these little bat birds things. I'm actually uh, financially embarrassed. I'm broke, if you've noticed. I spent all my gold on the upgrades. Um, now I've, I've spent through my hoard of money. So I actually have some upgrades sitting on me. At the end of this run, I'll show you guys where I'm at stat-wise. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not obviously gonna, I don't really want to spend my gems for gold. So I'm poor, so I can't upgrade everything right now. Um, even though now I'm actually, this is actually a good scroll dropping level. Um, I will say that. So it helps, especially with my gear now requiring so much. So, um, this room You'll encounter a room like this again, but it will have the bats in it. And you're going to see how it gets so crazy. Because you want to take out these guys, the living bomb, uh, and then the blue ghoul. But you can't because there's the little bat creatures that want to take up all your time. So that's what makes this level especially difficult. But I would rank order of importance on creatures that you want to take out is the new living bomb bigger one that shoots the four projectiles then the blue ghoul and then you want to take out the ice golem because you're going to have screens where there's multiple of them on the screen and they're just really tricky when there's so many projectiles even though they move apart it's just a lot for you to focus on so that's my my helpful tips on that one but now we're coming up on boss three which they also cycle could be um a ghoul boss or it could be this winged egg which is a real pain in the ass we'll see which one it is okay it's the ghoul boss 
So the ghoul boss is actually not that hard. He has about four moves. Uh, he shoots out uh, a flurry like that, which it's kind of random. It, it's kind of hard to really predict where they're going to go so you can avoid it in time. It He'll shoot out these beams. Uh, oh, wow. This is... And he'll shoot out two orbs, a la like last cast, Lost Castle, that will then do a ton of damage to you. But for those, the orbs, I kind of run in the middle once it's launched a projectile, and then move on. Move through it, you know? And then for the, where he freezes the thorns, you kind of just look in that direction where it's going to go, and you move on. For the flurry, best of luck, you know? Even with slow projectile, it still wasn't enough. So I, I really don't know, like, some it's just luck sometimes. But you can see now these levels are starting to get crazy with, like, buzz saws and bombs and ice golems. So, you know, just huh, do your best. That's all I can say. Take out the living bomb first. See, very problematic creature. Those projectiles go across the whole screen. They don't stop until they hit the walls or an obstacle. So you really want to take care of them quickly. See, now you can see why this is a bullet hell level. A real bullet hell level. Like, more so than we ever thought. When we thought we saw bullet hell levels before, that was just a joke. This is a real bullet hell level. So, this is why I haven't uploaded a video, because my runs have been so terrible... It was just not even worth sharing. Like, the runs would be over in a couple minutes. And I'm like, wow, I guess I'm just really terrible at this game because I know that only 9% of people have gotten this far, but still, that was a beautiful proc by the Invincibility Shield, by the way. Oh, you also have smaller little living bombs. They don't really do anything. They just shoot out a all-direction projectile when they die and periodically. So don't have to worry about them too much. I'm actually gonna... I don't really generally take the heal unless I'm, like, almost dead. Because it's, it's there's no point. I need as much damage output as possible. And, uh... Yeah, we'll spend the gems. That's what they're there for. Which means that I'm not gonna do well on the egg boss. The winged egg boss, you're, as you're gonna see. I It's it's about 50-50 if I actually beat him. Because I... When I have a revive, for sure, I can beat him. But without a revive, it's really lucky. We'll make it to him, though. But I don't know if we'll beat him. See, now you can see. This is nuts. And then you don't know when the ghouls are going to strike. So you kind of want to, like, move. Keep your distance, but... Jeez. Try and get away from those bombs as much as possible. Don't paint yourself in a corner. Because then, you know... You're going to get rocked. You won't be able to avoid it. Especially when you have multiple. In a level like that, get in the more open area. Don't stay behind the obstacles because they'll pin you in a way that you can't get out. This is true. Trust me. I've died many times because of it. See? You see how they just take up the targeting reticle? Makes it very hard to focus on who really needs to die first. They just are a priority. The, the game is programmed to make sure they're the priority. It's really aggravating. Because no matter how much I move, it's just random if it wants to reassign and work on that one. The living bomb. That's the one I'm referring to. Don't get this. It's no. Because one, you never know when these kind of things are going to proc. And it's just not worth it. I'm going to go with HP boost because I went this entire time without getting one. So I'm actually negative health because of the devil. Um, and I'm coming up on the boss and I really could use the health. <sighs> or am I? I guess I'm positive health. Anyway, I'm going to explain this boss because I want to try and keep silent on it. The winged egg has uh, three attacks. It will shoot out a diagonal bullet that doesn't seem like much, but 
at a certain point, it splits into four. Kind of like the old rock golem from Crystal Mines, if you remember. Then it will also shoot out a flurry, which will also split into four. Um, and so, and they move fast. So it's just really hard to navigate and to not get hit. As you'll see. See, there's the flurry. And it splits. And I took damage. And so that's why this boss is a crapshoot if I'll actually stand a chance. And I'm not doing a lot of damage to it, so that means I have to outlast it, which is not likely. Slow projectile is kind of helping, but even then, not that much. An egg monster likes to attack a lot. So, my strategy is... Well, don't stay in the same spot. Um, cycle around the level as much as possible. So that you can have enough window room to avoid these attacks. Don't get comfortable in any one area. At all. Okay, we killed him. That really was 50-50. Oh, I thought I was going to take a full damage. I only took one. I could really use the heal. The game listened. Okay, so now we're on the 40th level. I do not have what it takes to actually take this out. Um, headshot would have been nice. Actually, this is a level I recommend getting headshot for because with so many enemies on screen, even that that's the one proc ability I would say definitely take because it could it can make a difference if you can headshot one of these guys. Um, I'm already almost dead again, but we killed the living bombs. So that's good. All right. Now it's getting real nuts. Slow projectile is kind of helping. I'm going, I go back and forth on slow projectile for this level. I really just don't know how I feel about it. Wow. See, now they, th that hit did 2,000 damage. So in the 40 plus level range, you really can't take any hits because you're going to die. The ghoul's still alive. That's how this level so long that I didn't even realize that it wasn't not dead. I maybe got one more hit left in the tank. Maybe. But I don't think so. Okay. Okay, one ghoul's dead. The ring creature's dead. We got one more level up. Will we make it to the angel? At the angel, I will take the heal unless there's a health boost. Oh, this is not going to be a fun level at all. See? Did you see that hitbox? I sure saw that hitbox. It's huge. Anyway, that's going to do it for this run. But I want to make sure I show you guys where I'm at stat-wise. I wanted to jump into it. So we're uh, at level 53 now. This is my levels. I'll just show that really quick. Where we're at. Okay. We're at 18%. That hasn't been up. That will never get upgraded. That's at max. Okay. And then here's here we're at gear-wise. Have you seen? I, I got the uh, the legendary pet now as per my last video. If you haven't checked out that video, here's a link to it right now. Go ahead and check it out, you know, show it some love. Give it a like as well. Um, do we have enough to actually upgrade anything? We do. So, again, you know what, no. We'll, we'll give some love to the laser bat. The laser bat deserves it. So, a little love to the laser bat, but that's it, I'm broke. So, huh. c'est la vie. Oh, I guess we can get some of these. I'll maybe grab that later. But that's where we're at. And that's going to do it for this run. If you like content like this, again, I implore you to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and leave a like and a comment on content you'd like to see in the future. I'll do my best to get to it. My name is Gazda, and it's been a pleasure. Maybe next run will be successful, but hopefully that gets you started in Frozen Pinnacle. Maybe one day we'll actually get to the last boss. 
but it ain't now. All right, see ya.